Hello again. This is a continuation of the last video where we looked at the auto swather control of a mower, which had a few issues with the PWM signal that was being sent out to just to, to set the speed of the the auto swather, which is just basically a conveyor belt on the back of the mower, which can be in position or, or out of position depending on controls. Now, the the actual human inter input device or human interface device in that case was it was a pot and a latching switch, a three position latching switch and a three position momentary switch. And I've just repeated the same thing here. There was a problem with that because whenever you switch the mower off, it went to, it set the actual auto swear, the, the conveyor belt to the fastest speed. So I've just built an expansion board for the cinnamon bun, which we've been playing with. And basically it's just the same thing It's it's, it's got these two switches look identical, but one is a latching switch and the other is momentary. Now, the speed was set with a pot and I've replaced that with a rotary encoder. So this doesn't have any limits. It will just keep turning and turning um, anti-clockwise or clockwise. And this rotary encoder has a switch built into it. So if you push the pillar down, then that's another switch. Which wasn't on the previous version, but it's on this this what I've implemented here. The circuit is this expansion board. It looks kind of complicated because I put. It looks kind of complicated because I've split it into two boards because just to get the height of these three switches the same. So I've, I've built the rotary encoder onto its own little PCB and then soldered it in with basically 2.54 millimeter um, pins and that's it I mean it, it's a very simple circuit if you look at the circuit there's 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 an IC down there which is that's a D-bounce chip look at it in, in the um, in the schematic here basically I've just to keep the software simple, usually debouncing of switches is done in software because it's cheaper. But this is a very simple board with a couple of resistors, a couple of capacitors, and I just added debounce into the hardware because it's not going to make a huge significant amount of difference to me. So we've got a Max 6817 on each of the three position switches, and these are two channel debouncing chips. So it's a little six pin package and it debounces the two pin the two switches that it's connected to and the max another one in the family the max 6816 is just the single input debouncing chip and that's on the rotary encoder switch so the switch that's built into the pillar of the rotary encoder it has its own debouncing what that means is i don't have to debounce the uh, the any changes on the the switch positions in software and it's going to keep the software cleaner uh, for this example so I mean the software then becomes a simple I've only got I'm only logging out output to the serial interface at the minute because I have to get the control part that, that fits on the, the mower and then we get the two talking to each other but we have got basically we set up six change notification callback functions so if there's a change on rd0 we want this pin to be this callback function to be called similarly if there's a change on rd1 call this callback function now all these most of these that are connected to the switch just the callback all it does is log to the the serial interface the debug port so that i can see that the code and is reacting to my inputs so the operator inputs on these switches the only callback that is different is the rd2 change notification callback which as soon as rd2 goes low then you have to test what the value or what the actual input value of rd3 is so pin 2 goes low and then you check rd3 and depending on whether rd3 is high or low at the time you've just had a, a change to 
somebody's turned the actual rotary encoder clockwise, in which case I print a positive, or they've rotated anti-clockwise, in which case I just log out serial logging a negative. And those are the six callbacks. So the, the, the six callbacks, there's no debouncing. There's, they're just basically at the minute log into the, the debug port. So each one of these pins is initialized as an input. And then we attach the change notification function that we want called. So in this case, we want change notification registered for pin RD0 and the function, the callback function we want to call is RD0 change. So all the main actually does then is called libby soup initialize and forever loops on libby soup tasks and everything else is just handled by the callbacks so this is an event driven if you like little piece of, of hardware so if we look at this on If I look at if we just look at the serial output that we would get now I'll have to I'll have to actually plug this into my cinnamon bun. Now the code is already loaded into the cinnamon bun, so it's just a case of. Hopefully, it's just a case of powering this up. So that's it, it's entering the main loop. And all the main loop is going to do nothing but Libby soup tasks. And that's the latch and switch. Or the zero. So when it's turned on, we get a change notification. When it's turned off, we get a change notification. Similarly, the other latching switch is on RD1. So it's connected, it's disconnected. Connected, disconnected. The the center, the little toggle switch on the or the the momentary switch, sorry, the momentary switch on the rotary encoder is on RD4. And then our momentary switch on the other side, the three position is five and six. And then the rotary encoder, if I turn clockwise, I get positive. Now I do get a few spurious negatives in there. I'm not sure why. I don't know whether that's the way I'm turning it. Anti-clockwise negative, clockwise positive. So apart from a few spurious events, that is our human input device or human interface device for this more controller that we're making. Uh, obviously, when we have the bit the the actual control module at the, on the mower we have to start picking PIDs and sending PIDs over the CAN bus in the CAN bus frame to the control module so the control module can then act on these changes in input. Um, but that, that's it. That, for the minute, is our human input device, our human interface device. Uh, a number of inputs, a number of change notifications and a very simple project as a result because all you're doing is monitoring changes on six inputs seven inputs if you if you count the two that are, are connected to the the rotary encoder and and that's it for this this is a very short and sweet video that is the our human interface device for this project now hopefully the, i've been a bit delayed for this video because i I've started the contract so hopefully the next one i'll get it churned out quicker than this one I hope that's of use.
thanks a million for watching